I called order the City Council meeting for City of East Grand Forks for Tuesday, January 16, 2017. It's now 5 o'clock. Would the City Administrator please call roll? <clears throat> Mayor Steve Gander. Here. Council President Mark Olstad. Here. Council Vice President Chad Grassel. Here. Council Members Clarence Vetter. Here. Mike Pachavinsky. Here. Tim Maria Pell. Here. Henry Tweeten. Here. Mark Demers. Present. Does turn the quorum seat. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Open forum and opportunity for members of the public to address City Council on items not on the current agenda. Items requiring council action will be deferred to staff for boards and commissions for research and future council agendas if appropriate. If you'd like to address the city council, please come up to the podium to do so. Senator Johnson, do you want to address this at all? Sure. Uh-oh. I got a speech. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for opening it up to me tonight. Uh, I just want to stop by. Uh, you, it's been a while since the legislative session, so maybe refresh your memory on a couple of things that uh, are relevant. Uh, and then also, I just want to take any questions or concerns uh, forward. We have sessions starting up here in a little more than a month, uh, so I thought it might be a good opportunity to uh, see what you're thinking, uh, needs of the city, uh, those sorts of things. Uh, so some of the, one of the big things that, that I wanted to bring forward was um, hopefully that you're hearing from your small businesses here. Uh, you're seeing that property tax relief uh, in their proposed uh, 2018 tax statement kick in. Uh, we just got a couple of tax statements from Roseau County showing that uh, a lot of their small businesses are getting anywhere from 10 to 13 percent reduction in their uh, overall tax bill for property tax, which is pretty exciting for those small Main Street businesses and hopefully it will help some of the businesses here in town. We're always excited to help them. Uh, the other thing related to tax is we've got the current tax, uh, the federal tax bill that was passed uh, right before Christmas. One of the projects going forward in this session uh, is to try to get some parity between the state tax bill and the federal tax bill, so the state tax, uh, 179, those sorts of issues that were always a little bit uh, out of sync with the federal. Uh, we're going to be working on trying to get that. I know Dayton isn't exactly happy to uh, reduce taxes, but uh, we're going to try to do some more tax relief in those areas. Uh, a couple of the other things, uh, tomorrow uh, is kind of a big day up here in District 1. We have the bonding tour committee. Uh, it's going to be coming up to Thief River Falls and Crookston. Uh, some of the projects they're going to be looking at is Northland Technical College. Uh, it has some projects. They want to expand some classroom space and do some things uh, to uh, help facilitate labs and that sort of thing. Uh, and then they're going to stop in Crookston at the food bank and UMC and DigiKey uh, and see some of the things that are going on over there. Uh, Another thing that, that's going on, I had a few people ask me if we're going to raise LGA by 25% this year. It's a non-budget year, so Mark, no, we're not going to be doing any of that this year. <laughs> um, and then other than that, um, you know, we're, we're trying to get some feedback onto what the concerns are uh, coming into this legislative season. Uh, it's actually been fairly quiet. Uh, talking with Dan Fabian up north, who's 1A, and then Deb Keel, uh, 1B. Um, you know, we've, we've been listening, going to meetings, trying to hear, and it's been relatively quiet. I think the three big things that come up uh, have been taxes, uh, health insurance premiums, that's still another big one, and then uh, the confusion with buffer, buffer zones are still another one. Um, but this could all be moot, you know, as far as going forward to next session, because as Mr. Galsta is probably interested in the whole succession with the constitutionality of our Senate president going up to become lieutenant governor and the legal challenges involved with that. Uh, that's going to be one that, that's going to really throw a wrench into the legislative session, depending on how that uh, gets, gets resolved. If 
If it's okay that she can do both positions, uh, then we're all right. Uh, if she isn't allowed to and she has to be lieutenant governor, that might be all right, depending on how the special election is going in Senator Schoen's district, who had to resign due to uh, some activity on his part. Um, if if there's a you know if that seat stays the same, then we don't know exactly what's going to be happening uh, with a 33-33 tie, because uh, Dayton has the power to set the special election, which is what would have to happen if Senator Fishbach went up to Lieutenant Governor and then had to resign to try to get her Senate seat back. And then that would mean that he could do it either, you know, end of February or, you know, July sometime. So this is going to be kind of an interesting <laughs> session. So stay tuned. It should be a good one. Um, other than that, if you have any questions, I'd sure be happy to take them. Anybody have any questions? Mr. Tweeden? I'd like to make a request to you for you. Um, at the present time, we have a task force on drugs in northwestern Minnesota, and uh, our chief of police has started the process of, of obtaining a dog that can sniff out marijuana. What if that does, it, it takes and gives them a, the option of, uh, of uh, opening the door having the dog smell marijuana, if it smells marijuana, nine times out of 10, there's uh, uh, meth or some other strong drug there. Sure. And uh, the thing is that at the present time, uh, this drug deal <coughs> permeates the entire state like the bubonic plague. And the thing is, it's gonna take some money and considerable effort to uh, enlarge all these task force in the state of Minnesota to get rid of it. And uh, you should talk to the leadership. It should be expanded along borders where there's a major city. Drug dealers come in here because they think they're not gonna be identified as easy in a major city. You've got that in Fargo, Moorhead, and so forth. We should probably expound it further and get the state of North Dakota on their eastern boundary. Because what's happening is, the net result of it is, the people pay for it in recidivistic uh, uh, crimes and uh, our judges now are giving in the eighth in our northwestern district, the eighth county, are giving longer terms in jail. And uh, the thing is that if we expand it, then you you undoubtedly will have them go into North Dakota. They can get into the U.S. District Court. You got the same thing in Fargo. But they, they take and they gravitate along uh, places like this because we have a major highway, 29, we've got 220, and we got number two. But talk to your leadership about it. And we've got a gentleman sitting way in the back, our, our chief of police, Mike Hedlund. And I would appreciate if you'd visit with him. He can give you more details. So, Councilman Tweeden, so what I'm, what I'm understanding, you're concerned about the funding then for our tax, task forces in Northwest Minnesota and having the ability to cross state lines between, making sure that they're working between the two states. Well, we'll get, we'll get other states to join us. Sure. That's the thing. Okay. Well, but I'll look into that to more. you chief back there and he'll tell you what we've got now and what we're trying to do in this area of Northwestern Minnesota. Okay. I can give you some kind of idea. We do also currently already have an intergovernmental agreement um, between North Dakota and Minnesota so we can cross state lines already for helping each other and using the resources. We also work with the Border Patrol and also Homeland Security. So we, we do cover all the way up to the Canadian border already and North Dakota does also. So there are some things that are in place. I think the major factor that Mr. Tweeten's asking for is that the funding source needs to be looked at of 
maybe more funding. Uh, I know that was an issue that was brought up last year. Uh, I sit on the Judiciary Committee and we administer some of the funding for those agencies and those task forces. So that's one of the things that, that we really looked into. Uh, the um, sheriff in Polk County and I, I had quite a few conversations about that. that. So uh, then I'm with you. I feel very, very oh. strongly about that. So I thank just you. talked to some law enforcement uh, people a short time ago. Uh, uh, it isn't diminishing. We, we've got to, right. we, we've got to yep. grab the ball. Oh, it's a public safety and, issue. Uh, it's expanding, that is for sure. We also have a man back there in the, that may want to talk to you from a news media after you talk to the chief. Sure. Okay? I have well, thank uh, you. one item, or maybe two. Um, so you will hear, I think, in the coming one to two years, we're going to operate through our park and rec department. We're going to operate inside the DNR. I know that you make an appropriation through the DNR for some capital improvements in some of their programs. And so thinking of our greenway, thinking of our campground, there's some thought that we would perhaps add camping cabins. That was actually the idea of the DNR. And then also uh, an emergency shelter. Like right now, if those sure. people camping in there, if there's bad weather, winds and, and thunder, lightning, tornado coming in, they all hightail it up to the fire hall. And okay. so we'd like to have actually kind of a designated um, shelter right there that maybe could also include an interpretive center above that. And if that could be in some way cooperative through the state. But we would, we'd work through the DNR. We, we in the past, I think, have ended around to the DNR just a little bit, and that doesn't seem to go well in the long term. So we'll, we'll work through the appropriation inside of the DNR sure. to try to get some of these things done for the campus. This has been something that's been on the radar for a while. I, I yes. remember vaguely hearing about this at yes. one point. Right? So, okay. And the other one that's well on your radar is South End Bridge. We'll work on that. Everybody's in favor of that, right? Almost. <laughs> the, the people who uh, I think will carry the day are in favor of it. Wonderful, yeah. wonderful. Anybody else have anything at this time? I see none, sir. All right. Thank it. you Thanks very much. Thanks, it. Senator. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Yes, thank you. Uh, approval of minutes for January 2nd regular <clears throat> meeting and January 9th work session. Move by Grassel. Second. Second by Demers. Any discussion or questions? See none. Roll call, please. Reappel. Yes. Tweeten. Yes. Allstat. Yes. Grassel. Yes. Demers. Yes. Vetter. Yes. Pachavinsky. Yes. Ms. Carried. <coughs> Schedule bid lettings none. Schedule public hearings none. Consent agenda items under consent agenda will be adopted with one motion. However, council members may request individual items be pulled from this consent agenda for discussion and action if they choose. Any council member like any. Items three through 11 pulled. See none, entertain a motion of three through 11, please. I'll move. Moved by Mr. Tweeden. Second. Second by Mr. Grassel. Any discussion or questions? Just on two items. Um, the, the two positions, um, you know, the, the supervisor position in the park and rec and the uh, external lead um, for that facilities <laughs> operation. I think this is, um, especially that the, the team lead facility person, I think we need to make sure that that we do our due diligence in, in trying to find a person that's gonna be able to really like lead. Uh, that is, I, I'm just, I'm gonna vote no if I know that there are somebody that we put in that position that isn't going to be able to work with all of our people in, in our in our system. I, I think this is the time that we've we've since I've been on the council, we've tried to stick handle through different positions and different things, and I think this is the time that we can make a a really opportunistic time to make a good change. So I, I'm just putting it out there publicly that this is I think this is a good time. So that's all I have to say. Absolutely. Anything else to read on that? I don't think so. Yeah. I think hit the nail on the head with the, the hope, hope and intent of the position change. <coughs> Anybody else have any questions or comments? None. Roll call, please. Reappel. Yes. Tweeten. Yes. Holstead. Yes. Grassel. Yes. Demers. Yes. Vetter. Yes. 
Pachavinsky. Yes. Motion is carried. Acknowledge receipt of reports on officers, boards, and commissions. Regular meeting minutes of Water, Light, Power, and Building Commission, for December 21st, 2017. Communication, there's none. Old business, reconsider approving a non-exclusive agreement between the City of East Grand Forks and Northland Community and Technical College for the use of northeast corner of the city parking lot west of 4th Avenue Northwest for the truck driving program from January 9th, 2018 until January 8th, 2019. Boom. Oh. Goodbye, Tweeten. Second. Second by grass, so Mr. Riappel. I apologize for not being here last week. I uh, was out sick and didn't want to give everybody else what I had. Uh, but I did listen and watch the whole proceedings. I'm sitting here looking at the contract that's been proposed and several items on here stick out. You've got the maintenance and repairs, which is number nine on here, which dictates that the city should do the snow removal, et cetera, on this particular project. Also has operating expenses for uh, uh, various things like exterior lighting. I fail to understand when there's nothing being paid how they can dictate that we should have to do these particular items for them. I just want to let you know how I vote tonight is not going to tell you how I really feel. But I will say this, next year I will vote no on this if we do not get some sort of payment on it and or some of these items are taken out of this contract. I don't think we should be doing the snow removal when we're getting no compensation for it. That's all I need to say. Anybody else have any questions or comments on this matter? See none. Roll call, please. Rhea Pell. Yes. Tweeten. Yes. Olstad. Yes. Grassel. Yes. Demers. No. Vetter. No. Pachavinsky. Yes. Motion is carried. On a new business, number 14, consider adopting the East Grand Forks Police Department in car camera and body worn camera policy. Move by Grassel. Second. Moved by Vetter. Any questions or discussion? Seeing none, roll call, please. Reappell. Yes. Tweeten. Yes. Olstad. Yes. Grassel. Yes. Demers. Yes. Vetter. Yes. Pachavins. Yes. Motion is carried. Number 15, consider approving Ordinance 23 4 Series, amending City Code Chapter 31 by adding sections 31.65 through 31.68, entitled Park and Recreation Commission, and by adopting by reference City Code Chapter 10, general provisions, and section 10.99, which among other things contain penalty provisions. First reading. Move. By Grassel. Second. Second by Reappell. Any questions or discussion? Mr. Demers. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I appreciate uh, Mr. Galstead going ahead and making those changes. Uh, the only question I have is, I like the top, the first couple of sentences where it talks about kind of the council. Um, I guess I would suggest removing, um, well, I guess it says in the one, two, three, four, Fifth sentence, it's, it starts with two of the seven persons uh, shall initi be initially appointed commissioners for a one year term, one shall be a council member. I would change it to uh, two of the commissioners appointed by the mayor shall be appointed to a t uh, one year term and then just strike the whole one shall be a, a council member. And then the same thing for this, the next line, two shall be two of the Commissioners appointed by the mayor should be appointed for uh, two years and then strike the whole one shall be a council member. And then on the last section of that be just, and the remaining commissioner appointed by the mayor shall be appointed for a three year term. And I guess that would just eliminate any requirement that the council would be an off year. Like I said in the meeting last week, we usually typically go on a two-year basis with that, and it's always the same. So I guess that would be my suggestion, and if there was resistance to that, I guess I wouldn't make an amendment, but if there wasn't, I'll move to amend those type of things. So 
I think you did discuss this last weekend, too, last week, right? Correct. Right. And like I said, I think Mr. Galstead did put in the first part that right. clearly <coughs> defined the council as being the appointer of the council seats, but I would just take the council seats out of the whole term discussion because it kind of, they don't really follow along. Or typically, we don't, that's not how we do appointments. So, big comments on it, Mr. Galstead, at all? Or? That's a policy decision. It can yeah. be done at, at Just your. Wanted to make sure, and it doesn't change the substance of the ordinance, and so it can be it can be modified before the final reading. Are you saying to go ahead with it the way it is, and they can be modified, or are you? Well, you it want can to be modified now if if that's what they're asking to do. It doesn't change the fact that, uh, um, and, and it's legal to do so because it doesn't substantially change the. Is that, does anybody have any objection, I guess? If, if nobody has an objection, I'll move to amend. Do you want me to say it again? <laughs> um, <laughs> or you haven't? You're basically just saying strike the one shall be a council member from, the fir from those uh, two terms. Right, and then add the language that says two of the commissioners appointed by the mayor shall be <clears throat> appointed for a one-year term. Two of the or of the commissioners appointed by the mayor uh, shall be appointed for two terms, and the remaining member appointed by the mayor shall be appointed for three terms. And strike the one shall be one shall be of the commissioners. That's my motion. <laughs> Maybe my you just want to table it. I mean, it's not like it's urgent, and I could modify this if that's what you want. It's, it's up to you. Or you could pass it as is. We modify it. It won't substantially change it, and then we can keep it on this track. I'd love to see it stay on track. I know there's some yeah. sense of uh, wanting that input, if, if it's possible. It is possible. So we could just approve as without the amended motion from Mr. Demers, and then you'd modify it the next second For reading. the next reading. Yes, because Let's do it that. doesn't substantially yeah. change the uh, motion. Just want to make sure the correct way. Anybody else? Anything, Mr. Mayor? One other thing that I would say is, coming out of our planning session, one of our hopes was to be intentional about getting more community input as to guide us on how we do what we do. This is a big step in that direction. When you form a commission like this, you're bringing community <laughs> members in, a whole group of them that are interested in what happens in Parks and Rec. And then they're giving their input to help guide the process. I think it's a good step. Okay. Anybody else have anything? Not roll call, please. Reappel. Yes. Tweeten. Yes. Olstad. Yes. Grassel. Yes. Demers. Yes. Better. No. Pachavinsky. Yes. Motion is carried. Number Mr. 16. Demers, could you just um, email me your comments? I'll so that mark I up a thing. And Thank you. Number 16, consider authorizing Wood says Smith and Knowlton to proceed with a change in scope of work on Reinhardt Drive from the street reconstruction to a mill and overlay project and amend the project memorandum. Both. Who by Reap? Oh, Pachaminsky? Second. Second by Vetter. Any discussion or questions? Mr. Reapel. I'm assuming from what I listened to last week that the reason we're doing this is just in case we do a roundabout. That's correct. With with a potential roundabout, there could be some reconstruction realignment in Reinhardt Drive, and I don't want to tear it all up again. Reconstruction now, and then tear half of it out in two years. So, okay, and we're still going to vote on a roundabout somewhere down the line, correct? I'd, I'd like to make a comment. Uh, I I think we have a problem there, uh, as far as I'm concerned. I, I, I've yet to run into anybody that says that a roundabout should be put into a situation like this. Uh, oh my God. The thing is, lights Mr. will Tweet, control. We're not, it. we're not talking about a roundabout now, anyway. We're talking yeah. about just over mill and overlay. So we're not. Okay. All right. We're not deciding tonight, Henry, if we're doing a roundabout or not. Anybody else have anything? One of the things that we talked about and hasn't been done. You're, uh, you're supposed to shoot uh, readings on the parking lot by the senior center. That should be done. It's important to them, it's important to the entrance of the point. Yep. 
Anybody else have anything? Roll call, please. Rhea Pell. Yes. Tweeten. Yes. Olstad. Yes. Grassel. Yes. Demers. Yes. Better. Yes. Pachavinsky. Yes. Motion is carried. Number 17, consider authorizing, authorizing Wits S. Smith and Nolte to include the ADA improvements to the sidewalk system on 17th Street <coughs> Northwest and amend project memorandum to include this project. Motion. Move. Move by Demers. Second. Second by Reappell. Any questions or discussion? Mr. Demers. With this, do we have to amend the document at the MPO level then as well? or? Yeah, I had to do a with with MPO do kind of a project nomination for him to get that included on the TAC or whatever. Okay, so is there an urgency to that or I've was that something I've actually to completed do? the paperwork and it'll go to the MPO meeting in February. Okay, thank you. Anybody else have anything? I see none. Roll call, please. Rhea Pell. Yes. Tweeten. Yes. Olstead. Yes. Grassel. Yes. Demers. Yes. Vetter. Yes. Pachiminski. Yes. <laughs> Motion is carried. Number, claims number 18, consider authorizing city administrator, administrator clerk treasurer to issue payment of recommend bills and payroll. Move. By Demers. Second. Second by Rhea Pell. Any discussion or questions? See none, roll call please. Rhea Pell. Yes. Tweeten. Yes. Olstad. Yes. Grassel. Yes. Demers. Yes. Fetter. Yes. Pachiminski. Yes. Motion is carried. Mayor Gander. In our community, we have a lot of people who consistently work hard to make life better for others. They do it because they care about people. They do it because they love the community and want to make it a better place, and they are not easily discouraged. They are the kind of people who give their best effort, even on the last play of the game, with 60 yards to go and 15 seconds to do it. Hey, you might just win. It could happen. <laughs> They're grinders. They know the right thing to do, and they do it. And I appreciate them. And I think we all appreciate them. We all know some of these people. So we have a nomination this week for a Grinder Award. His name is Brian Nelson. Brian's involved with Pheasants Forever. And they're very active in raising funds. And a tremendous amount of the funds that they raise go to youth. They go for habitat, but they go for youth on safety with firearms and on, of course, proficiency with firearms. And they're helping these young people to learn conservation and learn, again, to love the outdoors, um, step away from your gadgets, and get out and do some real stuff. And I love it. And I, I think we have some folks even on our, on our council here who have, have benefited or know of this. Mr. Vetter, anything? You're involved with the competitive shooting at the, at the school? Uh, yeah, I'm one of the coaches for our Eastside Trap team. Brian Nelson was uh, one of the people that first started the team, got us involved with it, and has been funding our team since the get-go. What Brian and Pheasants Forever has done is they've donated money to Midway USA Foundation and the Potter Fields which own the foundation or set up the foundation usually match either one for one or two for one any donations going in there. And then on an annual basis uh, we can make application to pull out uh, up to 5% of, of the interest the money has earned. This year alone we're, we're getting $10,000 towards our program to help support our, our trap team. Not only does Brian support the East Grand Forks team, he's supported the Crookston team, the Thief River Falls team, Roseau, Greenbush, a number of the smaller communities in northwest or northwest <coughs> Minnesota here. He, he, Pheasants Forever has contributed money to this Midwest USA Midwest Foundation to help support their teams also. So, yeah, Brian does a lot for us. Anything else someone wants to add? Yep, I'd uh, also like to add on, on Brian. Um, if you know Brian, Brian's, Brian's everywhere. Um, he's at every booster tournament. He's at every gathering that, that is around. And he's always promoting his program, um, the trap shooting programs that he helps. But he's also promoting that youth thing. And, and, the, and the nice thing about it is um, he's brought his kids along with him. And, and those girls have grown up and did all those things along with him. And, and it just shows um, Brian's um, his passion for for the outdoors. Thank you. In a 2015 article by Brad Dawkins in the Grand Forks Herald, they talked about the Pheasants Forever and the efforts that they've made. Uh, to that date, they had raised $750,000 over the last decade for all of these various groups. 
And in that year alone, their number was going to be, in the, in the previous year, $118,000 raised for all of these individual groups that, that go. Well, I looked at the photo in the Brad Dawkin article, and also on their board of directors are his wife and daughter. And so they gotta, we got to have three grinder awards. So tonight, the three grinder awards <coughs> go to Brian Nelson, along with his wife, Michelle, and daughter, Jalen. We'll send these out. Thanks, you guys, for all that you do for our community. Anything else, sir? That's all we got. Mr. Vetter. I don't have anything. Thank you. Nothing to me. Mr. Rito. Nothing. I'd just like to make a comment. Uh, <clears throat> we've had the opportunity in the last couple of weeks of of uh, observing the operation of the city in a number of ways. First of all, the fire department did an excellent job of putting out the fire over uh, by the old uh, uh, barley plant over here. Uh, secondly, uh, Jason Stordahl uh, has done a wonderful job with his crew. Uh, in the last week or so, moving snow under very adverse conditions. He's out roaming around uh, with snow plows at three o'clock in the morning. He did it many times. And uh, uh, if he keeps doing what he's doing, he'll be running around with a uh, big shovel collecting the coal because it's been so clean. Uh, we've also uh, had the opportunity of, uh, I've seen the fire department rescuing uh, with a rescue vehicle and the ambulance uh, yesterday, and the police department was there. Uh, they were saving lives again. Uh, the thing that's important is we take and give them the equipment and personnel to perform these things. Then yesterday morning, uh, I went to church like all of us should, and uh, then I went to the Civic Center, and uh, our park department together with the skaters had a regional match, and it was just beautiful. And there were so many people there that there was people trying to uh, get coffee and so forth from the Blue Line Club. It was uh, over a block long. Uh, it, uh, it was just fabulous. So uh, the important thing is when you visualize this, uh, here, here people come in, uh, six different communities had little girls there, and uh, it was beautiful. We're showing that we're interested in our families. This city is an excellent city for families. No further comment. Nothing tonight, thank you. Mr. Grassel. Nothing. <coughs> um, just a reminder, everybody, too, that uh, March 14th is Legislative Day down in uh, St. Paul. Please let Megan know if you're going to be able to attend or not. It's March 14th. I do believe that uh, we would probably go down that Tuesday, in which we would then move our meeting to Monday, which would be the 12th. Um, so if there's, I know that myself and Mr. Murphy have indicated we're going. Uh, I'm not sure if anybody else got back to Megan at all. So if you could please do that, I appreciate it. Um, also, Thursday this week is the chamber dinner. Um, so it's at the Lair Center, and I know a couple of us are attending that also. But nothing else? Uh, I just wanted to uh, bring up the Tri-City meeting that was scheduled for Thursday of last week. That was canceled due to the weather. Uh, I have spoken with Mr. Uh, Senator Johnson over here and um, spoken with Thief River Falls and Crookston, and we are of the opinion that we are just going to have to find a date that works for Senator Johnson, Representative Keel, and Representative Fabian um, prior to the start of the legislative session on February 20th, and we just have to get as many council members from each city as we can. So we're, we're gonna have to go around their schedule. So that's all I have. Mr. Gulf. I just also want to thank uh, Jason for the mosquito control. The uh, crap count has been at zero for several months. <laughs> 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 oh. I have nothing. Anything from the department heads at all? Read. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.
feel like every time I come up with an update, it's bad news. So I'm going to jump on Henry first and uh, thank the figure skating club, the Northern Star Figure Skating Club. It, they put on an incredible competition, and it's largely volunteer-led uh, by their group. Uh, they had more than 235 individual skaters and more than 20 teams, that, and that was an increase in participation from past years. So um, by all accounts, a successful event for them. Uh, and then the bad news I get to share is uh, we had a break in a glycol line at the Blue Line Arena on Friday night. Um, the, the break is fixed. We had it broke by early Saturday morning. The, the leak had stopped. We had it all fixed back together. Uh, but the system is still down because we do not have enough glycol to get it back running. I don't know how much we lost, but the estimate is somewhere around 1,000 gallons of glycol. So to, put, to this point, we've added everything that we have in our inventory and everything that Lund Seth Plumbing has in their inventory. Uh, we're hopeful that we'll have it up and running by tomorrow. Um, but if we can't get access to more, it may be more towards the end of the week before that system is up and running again. So we did cancel practices there tonight. It's, it's hard to believe that's a cold rink. It's below freezing in there, but somehow the ice is melting without the system running. So uh, just more of an update for you. Than anything, just so that when you're out in the community, if you're going to games or to practices around the rinks tonight, you'll hear people talking about it, that that building is um, for the short term, hopefully the very short term, closed. Uh, as far as the break itself, we don't really know how it happened, where the, the PVC line connects to the header that feeds the glycol to the floor. It's right at that fitting. It's a threaded fitting, a one inch fitting, right where the fitting connects to the PVC pipe. that's covered up by like a two by 10 piece of wood and it, it was right at that spot that broke. The only reasoning that I can try to deduct that could have caused it is frost builds up on those lines as it cools and with as cold as it is. Maybe there was so much frost that as someone stepped on that piece of two by 10, if it crunched down on that line and broke it. I, I mean, I really don't have any other idea of how to place other than just if it's just general, it's the cold, I'm not sure. Have you tried any of the other communities around here? We, we have, yes. Uh, we, we called Crookston. Crookston doesn't have enough in stock to really supply us. Uh, you the need Grand me to Forks strong Park arm them? What's that? You need me to strong arm them? Yes, exactly. <laughs> I got some pull on that one. Uh, the, the Grand Forks Park District doesn't keep any extra in their inventory. The Ralph Ingolstead Arena here in town has glycol, but it's not compatible with our glycol. So um, we're still searching. If, if it comes to it, uh, we'd have to order it out of the cities, but we'd make that decision probably tomorrow morning um, on, on what we're going to do there. I really hope it doesn't come to that point because with the warm temps coming, we might be in trouble if that's, if that's the case. Thank you. Um, so we lost roughly 1,000 gallons. So over what amount of time? The, the break occurred at 10 o'clock at night. And it was right around midnight when Midwest Refrigeration's on-call guy was able to get there and shut down all the pumps in the system. So I've got, if anybody wants to see it, I have a short video of what it looked like from a text message that I received that night. So it was roughly two hours that we were pumping, basically pumping glycol at about five PSI out of that break. Um, so it's, yeah, it, I don't even know, I'm not sure, I haven't been able to get an answer of how much glycol that system holds, but we've added about 500 gallons back right now, and that hasn't been enough to be able to let the system run again. Okay. Anything else, sir? Uh, nothing for me. Why don't you end on some good news? Is that <laughs> That's <laughs> exhausted at the start. <laughs> Thank Anything you. else from the department heads? See none, entertain a motion to adjourn. Move by Second. Nutter, second by Demers. All in favor say aye. 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 Close, same sign. Motion is carried. There is a hockey game at 6 o'clock tonight. Rose on. I think we thought when they were serving when they come, so we get it. You and I would disagree on everything. <laughs>